We've got seven players for y'all in fantasy football this year that are going from good to great, from decent to elite since, okay? They had some sauce last year, but now we're cooking an entire meal. Seven players breaking out of jail and going nutty on the real world. Y'all know what we got to do. We got to tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Well, let's see. Player number one going from good to elite this year in fantasy football is Joey B. Cool Joe, man. Cigar smoking. 4,600 yards, 34 touchdowns last year. We got to remember that he came into last year with a torn ACL. They did not let that man loose. This year, they will. They were extremely run heavy. They will go more pass heavy knowing he's not going to be under pressure every single snap. They added offensive line play. Center, Ted Karras. Right guard, Alex Kappa and tackle Lyle Collins. He won't be under pressure. He won't. He's going to be smooth. He's going to be calm. He's going to be collected. And now you have Jamar Chase coming into the second year. You've got these trio of wide receivers that are situated, they're comfortable, and now they've played together for multiple years. Joey B is going to be Joey fucking ballin' this year. Next up on this list, we have Trey Lance, San Francisco 49ers quarterback, currently going off the board as quarterback 14. So it's almost like we're projecting him to be a bad thrower of the football. But the way I'd ask you to look at it is this. Quarterback 14, if you had to put your money where your mouth is at the end of the year, is he going to finish worse than quarterback 14 or higher than quarterback 14, assuming he's a starter, assuming he's healthy? There ain't no fucking person out there that thinks he's going to finish as the quarterback 17 if he's playing a full seven. Now, I'm not saying Lance is going to be an elite thrower. He can be. He's got a good arm. But I don't know. Here's what I will say. Over the last five years, I look back and of fantasy QBs that finish in the top 10, on average, at least three of them have finished with fewer than 4,000 passing yards in a season. We've gotten spoiled with the quarterbacks that have come up over the recent years and Herbert and Mahomes and whatever that are slingers, but you don't need to be those guys to be an elite fantasy quarterback option. On average, over those last five years, one top three fantasy quarterback has finished with fewer than 4,000 passing yards in a season. Last year, Lance played two and a half games. He had 31 rush attempts in two and a half games. He's got one of the best group of weapons in terms of yak, so he doesn't need to throw the ball downfield in order to produce either. And it is a top five offensive line that he will be playing behind. Listen, he might not be good, but he has every piece, but every piece is in place for Lance to go Sir Lance a thought on this league. Let's move to the first running back on this list, and that is Mr. DeAndre Swift. In two seasons, it's kind of felt like DeAndre Swift's broken out at this point, but he really has not because of injury. He has yet to finish above running back 18 in fantasy. He has yet to go over 1,070 yards from scrimmage, which is not really that difficult as a running back. This year, he'll do that with flying colors. Right now, he is entering his prime. He is at the ripe age of 20 three and a half. Last year in the entire NFL among all running backs, he ranked number one overall in yards created per touch. And the man absolutely lived on the field in all passing down situations. Third down, two minute drill, four minute drill. Second among running backs in overall target share. Second among running backs in route participation. Fourth overall in targets. I mean, you don't even need to be that good as a runner if you don't come off the field on passing situation especially for a team that's always losing. Swift is going to go crazy this year. He's going to catch 70 passes. This offense is going to be sneaky, decent, given Jared Goff is at the helm. So DeAndre Swift is going to go nutty this year. He'll be an elite pick in fantasy next year, as will A.J. Dillon after Aaron Jones moves, but he's going to be a great player this year. And it's crazy to me, with Devontae Adams gone, we should absolutely love both Dillon and Aaron Jones this year. But A.J. Dillon is currently being picked 16 running back spots after Aaron Jones in draft. This team is going to be wildly run heavy this year. You don't really think of them as a run heavy team, but they they were in the bottom half of the league in terms of pass rate last year, and they will sink even further into the sunken place down that list this year without Devontae Adams. A.J. Dillon will lead this team in carries in 2022. It's not a knock on Aaron Jones. I think Aaron Jones is going to play an Austin Eckler type role where he is in the slot on 25 to 35% of the time that he's actually on the field, which means A.J. Dillon will man the backfield for a lot of those snaps. Aaron Jones will be on the field getting 80 to 100 targets this year. A.J. Dillon is going to eat up a lot of goal line work. Do not be surprised if A.J. Dillon finishes this year with 12 or more rushing touchdowns. Let's get to the pass catchers. We have C.D. Lamb. He will 
not be missed on this list, but Amari Cooper will be missed in Dallas, as will his 130 targets. Michael Gallup will not step foot on the field in September, maybe not even in October, coming off that late season ACL tear. Lamb is going to be the clear, the clear wide receiver one in an offense with a very good quarterback that ranks top five in pace, in pass plays per game, and overall pass rate. Lamb feels like one of the safest picks in fantasy this year that actually comes with a sky-high ceiling. Okay, he might single-handedly lead your fantasy team to a 4-0 start in the month of September. Michael Pittman ain't a bad secondary piece to C.D. Lamb, all right? He's currently being picked as the wide receiver 21, and Michael Pittman is about to become a household name. I cannot find a resource out there, right? I'm scouring. I'm like, please, someone fucking bring me back down to earth when it comes to Mr. Michael Pittman. I can't find an individual resource out there that looks at individual players and how they fared against coverage, whether it's man, press, zone, win rate, et cetera, all those fucking buzzword terms, and didn't have Michael Pittman as an I'm not just throwing the word elite out there. I'm saying he was like top five in every category that had him singled out. Didn't matter what the team was doing, but him running routes against defensive coverage. All right, you're talking about Matt Harmon's reception perception, 79th percentile against man, 80th percentile against zone, 96th percentile against press coverage. That tells me that there is no D-back out there that's going to be able to stop this man while he's entering his prime. You look at player profile, a lot of the same sheesh right there. Now, Matt Ryan has absolutely poured targets into his wide receiver one in the past, whether it was Roddy White, whether it was Julio Jones, whether it was Calvin Ridley, and there's no real competition for targets for Michael Pittman in Indy. He's about to get the penthouse treatment from Matty almost melting ice. He is a huge upgrade to Wentz, though, all right? Wentz was horrible for Indy last year. Matt Ryan will be way better for them, which means it will be way better for Pittman. He is going to go bananas this year. He is going to go bonkers this year. You want Pittman everywhere you can possibly get this man. As with Dalton Schultz, the second cowboy up on this list, and a lot of the same reason we like CeeDee Lamb, we like Dalton Schultz, all right? The, the target competition in an offense that simply has so many fucking targets, just so many of them, just isn't there. And Schultz has taken a very, very clear path to breaking out in fantasy, right? The rookie year, the sophomore year was very underwhelming. Then he had his third year kind of breakout where he went 65 for 615, right? That's a nice tight end fantasy season altogether. Fourth year, the next year, he builds on top of that and takes the next step up. 78 catches, 808 yards, eight touchdowns. This is how things typically happen. Not everyone goes from a terrible rookie year to 1,200 receiving yards. Most of them take times. You take baby steps until you are the fucking man in that offense and you have earned the targets. And that's exactly where Mr. Schultz is. It's like where where Schultz is like a stock where you see it going up and you're like, oh, this is the top. I don't really want to buy at the top, but it's very clear to me that the the tip, we're not at the tip. The tip is going to keep growing. Pause. Schultz is not George Kittle. He's not Darren Waller in terms of just a raw, vacuum talented player, but for fantasy this year, he will be. All right. Those are seven players that I expect to go from good fantasy assets to elite by the end of the year. If you enjoyed the video, hit the button that looks like this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you are new, we'll be dropping videos just like this going forward and forever for the summer. I love you. I'm out of here.